Okay, so here's our first example. We're asked to find the general solution to this particular differential equation, right? Uh, now, in the book, it's written as y prime, right? y prime is just shorthand for, for dy dx. Uh, now, general solution means we're looking for the solution that involves some constant of integration, right? And a particular solution meaning you've chosen a value of that constant, often corresponding to an initial condition or something like that. One thing that uh, often you have to watch out for when you're solving these is sometimes there are, are kind of trivial solutions that don't necessarily fit into the family and you need to account for those. So things like, you know, if y is simply equal to zero, well then y prime is also zero and, and you get zero equals zero and that works out, right? Um, so those sort of trivial solutions like that, maybe they don't fit the family that you come up with at the end when you write down the general solution. Um, so you want to make sure that those are accounted for. Um, but we'll have a look, we'll see what happens in this example. So the first thing we do is we, we separate. So we separate. So we need to get 1 over y on that side times dy is equal to x squared times dx. And now we integrate. All right. So we take the integral of this side, we take the integral of that side. Uh, antiderivative for 1 over y. Natural log again, if you want, put the absolute value in. Um, we can talk about how to deal with that in a second. On the other side, it's just power rule. 1 third x cubed, right? Possibly plus some constant. Okay, so to solve for y, typically if you can, if you can solve for y, you should. Um, it's okay sometimes to leave implicit solutions, but if you can get explicit, it's typically better. Um, so, I mean, we could argue that technically we should take absolute value of y here. Um, and then on this side, we're going to have e to the 1 third x cubed plus some constant. And again, we want to, we want to account for the fact that that constant, you know, it's, we don't like having it up there. It's nicer to have it out front, right? So we might want to introduce something like, you know, y naught is equal to e to the c. Um, except here is where you account for that absolute value, right? Maybe you have an initial value that's negative, right? This corresponds to x equals 0, right? So maybe your x equals 0 value is negative rather than positive. But of course, an exponential function is, is, never, is never negative. It's always positive. So really, the absolute value is there, right? And once you kind of rewrite it, with this y naught out front. So if you write this as y is equal to y naught e to the 1 third x cubed, well, this exponential here still can only be positive, but now this constant out front could be positive or negative, right? And so that's essentially why you can drop the absolute value, because you know, if, if there was a minus sign, it's going to be accounted for by this constant out front. 